Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of 5 Minutes Sono, and in this video, we're going to talk about the sonographic evaluation for an aortic dissection. If you're looking in the abdomen, your probe of choice is probably going to be the curvilinear transducer in the vast majority of cases. If you're looking in the chest, the phased array transducer is going to get you a better image. When evaluating the aorta for a dissection, you can easily see the root and most of the ascending aorta. Occasionally you can see the arch often, but not quite as often as the arch. You can see the descending aorta. And then the abdominal aorta is pretty easy to see most of the time. Now let's talk about thoracic dissections and talk about the indirect signs of an aortic dissection first. Dissections are going to be more common in areas in which there already is dilation and aneurysm. Regurgitation can often be seen in an ascending aortic aneurysm. And if you have a dissection flap that extends into the pericardium, you can get an effusion and or tamponade. Let's talk more about the direct signs of a thoracic aortic aneurysm. So here is a pretty obvious one. Left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, aortic valve, a really dilated ascending aorta. You can even see a little flappy thing in there. The aorta should never have a valve or anything flapping inside of it. If you see anything that looks like a valve or anything that looks like it's flapping inside the aorta, that is a dissection. Now, this is a little more of a classic view of a dissection. We have a pretty big aorta here, and there's a big flap in the ascending aorta. You can also see the arch. Not a lot of people know about that, but you place a transducer, the phase ray transducer, in the suprasternal notch, and you have to kind of angle the probe a little bit oblique to be able to get the arch in a perfectly longitudinal cut because of how it comes out of the heart and goes into the retroperitoneum. Here is an example of how to get it. So you want to place a transducer a bit on the oblique side to get that cut, as I kind of mentioned, and you should get a view that looks like this. So we have the uh, ascending over here. You can't really see it very well. This is going to be the left carotid, left subclavian. This is the descending aorta over here on this side. So let's compare that to what an aortic dissection looks like in the arch. So we see here, this is a, a very easy to see flap right here in the ascending aorta. This is a dissection. This is not a dissection. The descending aorta can be a little bit difficult to get to, but sometimes you can even see it on the parasternal views. So this is a parasternal long axis view, left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, aortic valve, ascending aorta. Right here, you have the descending aorta and a nice flap able to be seen in the descending aorta. You can turn that into the short axis view of the heart and get that descending aorta in the long axis. And in this case, you can see a dissection flap going right there on the descending thoracic aorta. Now let's talk about direct signs of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. So let's talk about anatomy. You're going to place the probe with the probe marker to the patient's right, and this is what you're going to see, aorta, IVC, liver, and spine with a spine shadow underneath it. And you want to follow that thing all the way from the epigastric all the way down until you get to the split of the iliacs, which is going to happen right, look at that thing, right there. It's split into those two iliacs. That's how you do an adequate evaluation of the aorta. Now let's compare that with this. See, there's no valve. There's no flappy thing inside the aorta, but I see a valve. I see a flappy thing inside this aorta. This is abnormal. This is what a dissection looks like. Over here, we have an aorta without a dissection, the long axis, and you can easily see this stringy thing. Inside the aorta, this is what a dissection looks like. So to recap, when you're looking at the thoracic dissection, you need to look also for indirect signs besides direct signs. Indirect signs of a thoracic aorta are going to be things like aortic dilation or aortic aneurysm. You might see acute aortic regurgitation, and you might see a pericardial effusion or tamponade. If you have a patient that has a pretest probability of having a thoracic aortic dissection, and you see one of these indirect signs, that should really increase your suspicion of that patient having a dissection as the cause of their symptoms. Direct signs are pretty easy. It's just a flappy thing inside the aorta. The aorta should not have anything inside of it Definitely not anything that's flapping inside of it. If you see a flappy thing inside the aorta, it's a dissection. That's it for this week's 5 Minute Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet with any questions. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put in your name and your email address in little text boxes and never miss another video. And if you want these podcasts and videos sent directly to your smart devices when they come out, go to whatever podcasting service you use, type in 5 Minute Sono, leave me a rating and a review, and subscribe.